afternoon, everyone. I, I'm really, really happy uh, of the day we've had here in Thunder Bay. Um, I want to thank, uh, it's, it's very unique for me to be at an announcement and, and uh, you know, I travel all around the province, but it's great to have um, two of my colleagues here today. So I want to thank Lise for being here and as well, uh, Kevin, uh, for being here to join in this uh, wonderful uh, event uh, with Ontario Aboriginal Housing Services. Kevin obviously was my parliamentary assistant uh, when uh, our government got re-elected. So he and I worked uh, really well together. And at the uh, the OHAS event this morning, I talked about that he's uh, he set a record for uh, most times of snagging a cabinet minister into uh, the Thunder Bay area. I, I was wrong. I quoted 35, I think it's 37, right? So so he's corrected my math. I never said I was, uh, we're was, was great. Not that you're counting, right? That's right. But, but I do want to thank Justin, um, a fantastic advocate for uh, Indigenous uh, housing uh, across our province. Uh, and I want to, as I did this morning, uh, thank Elder Jean for your, your not just your the smudging ceremony, uh, your prayer, your song, but your, your words. And I said it this morning and I'll, I'll say it again this afternoon. We're, we're put, this announcement's put in a very good way and in a very good place uh, because of your presence uh, and your words, and I want to thank you for everything you do in the community, and thank you for being here today. You've really made this ceremony special to all of us, so thank you, Elder Um I also want to thank uh, Mayor Boschkov, who uh, uh, I've met I've met quite a bit the, the last uh, little while. We just came from the Association of Municipalities uh, of Ontario Conference in London, and it seemed that uh, every corner I turned, uh, Mayor Boschkov was, uh, was there, so uh, I just want to thank you for your uh, unwavering advocacy for your community, um, and I just I think that this is so important when uh, when we have a, an announcement this morning that included uh, Minister Haidu, the fact that uh, this community is so housing forward in terms of, uh, of their initiatives, and, and this is a this is a great opportunity. Um, you know, since the beginning of our government, we uh, we had some pretty lofty goals. We committed to building at least 1.5 million homes by 2031. I, I, I'll say to you that the best year that we've had as a government was in 2021. We had almost 100,000 housing starts, but uh, as I said, you guys are better at math than I am. You can see that over a 10 year period, that's not gonna get us to our million and a half goal. So we need to have more partnership, uh, more collaboration, more cooperation, and uh, we need to build um, a whole bunch of different types of homes. So, so this site, uh, is very special to us. I appreciate uh, Justin's uh, comments to me, but I'm I'm really uh, this is a really important day for us, as we're announcing uh, an investment of 8.7 million dollars through the Indigenous Supportive Housing Program to help uh, create 58 transitional housing units for Indigenous youth right here on this site. It's a momentous day and a, and a really wonderful project that will make a real difference in the lives of those young people who will be served at this facility. Um, so I think you need to give a round of applause. So we've said uh, a number of times that the Indigenous Supportive Housing Project is, uh, pro program is a very important one for the government. Um, we've, uh, we, we invest about $41 million annually. It was about a 40% increase. Um, it's one of the, the many programs the government has to help um, people who are either homeless or at risk of being homeless. And having a transitional housing space is, is very, very important for um, success. It, it's, it's an additional, um, the government spent an additional $190.5 uh, in the budget under our homelessness prevention plan. Um, the additional funding is going to really make a big difference in not just uh, the district social service boards like that are here in Thunder Bay, but the particular emphasis on Indigenous supportive housing um, really is, is a game changer. It builds upon the government's commitment uh, over the last several years. We, we've invested over $4 billion um, throughout the pandemic and, and moving forward, but it was that decision uh, by the government in the budget uh, to not only enhance homelessness prevention, but also the Indigenous Supportive Housing Program that I think makes projects like the one we're celebrating today possible. And as a government, 
uh, we need to continue to build upon them. Something that I know both Lees and Kevin will make sure we do as a government. So just thank you all for being here, uh, supporting a great uh, group of partners that are, that are behind me. Uh, I can't wait to come back uh, to see this uh, wonderful facility. And I, I want to really embrace the drawings. Justin told me about uh, the, the architectural concept with the, the, the drum-like uh, opening at the front of the building. Really interesting and uh, can't wait to come back to Thunder Bay. All the best. Which uh, Minister Clark. I uh, would also like to introduce uh, next, uh, Kevin Holland is the MPP for Thunder Bay Atacokan and the Parliamentary Assistant for Indigenous Affairs and Northern Development. And MPP Holland has also been uh, a very big supporter of Ontario Aboriginal Housing Services over the last five years. Uh, the province has more than uh, tripled our organization's budget because they recognize and see the need. Uh, and we know we have a lot more work to do, but the work that you've done for us, for community so far, has been fantastic. So, big wish to both of you. MPP, Kevin. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody doing today? So, so excited to be here along with uh, Honorable Steve Clark uh, to, to make this announcement. It's second of uh, announcement today that's going to be uh, bring about some foundational change in, uh, for Thunder Bay. We've, uh, as Minister Clark indicated, our government has uh, really stepped up on the funding and uh, Thunder Bay has really benefited from that funding. He touched on the homelessness prevention program funding and I said it in my remarks this morning, a $202 million increase in the budget. Uh, but more importantly for Thunder Bay, we've seen a 200% increase in that funding for homelessness prevention programming. So we've gone from the 5 million, just over 5 million to 16.5 million three years guaranteed so that's going to be foundational for us to address some of the social pro issues that we're facing here in Thunder Bay and I always say whenever there's a challenge or an issue there's always opportunity and through their government's investments we're realizing those opportunities here in Thunder Bay um, combined with just two weeks ago today I had Minister Tobolo here in Thunder Bay where we he led a mental health and addictions roundtable and uh, it was the first one that we've seen here in, in the city. Uh, from that, the organizations are going to go back, uh, gather some more information, and we'll gather again to start really addressing and focusing on our approach to dealing with the problem. But we know that housing is core to addressing that problem. So that combined with the wraparound services, that is such a focus of our government, and particularly Minister Tobolo, I think we'll, we were, are going to start seeing the change that we need here in Thunder Bay. And I'm so excited to be part of a government that is taking that on. So I, again, I want to thank everybody for being here today to celebrate this transitional housing unit for Junot Street. And I want to thank everyone for the commitment and incredible work to make this project successful. So Justin, I appreciate your kind words and Elder Jean for your opening prayers. and. Uh, Combined with the one this morning, you know, your words are really an inspiration for us to, to do this important work that we need to, to get done in Thunder Bay. So our government has been making real progress on the housing supply crisis. And as Minister Clark mentioned, we are investing $8.7 million in this exciting project to support Indigenous youth in Thunder Bay. Through this funding, the Thunder Bay Indigenous Friendship Centre will provide those wraparound services to youth in single unit pod style accommodations. This project will support participants with 24 hour youth workers and full time case managers. They will also have access to support services and programming based on their individual needs from life skills development to employment and education. This project will make a big difference as our local partners work to tackle homelessness and help more people find a safe place to live. As Minister Clark mentioned, we're also increasing our investment in the Homelessness Prevention Program, as we spoke about, and this increase pays particular attention to the added costs and challenges of tackling homelessness in Northern Ontario, which is why our government increased its investment in Thunder Bay, as I said, by 200%. That means that our allocation, again, it's worth mentioning, is going to 16.5 million, and speaking with uh, Thunder Bay DSAP, who administers the program for the government, 
we're going to see the majority of that going into capital. So that's going to make, as I said before, make the difference for us here in Thunder Bay. We know that this support and the project we are announcing today will make a real difference in the lives of people in our community. And, I'll, and I will keep advocating for our community in Queen's Park. Thank you. Uh, MPP Kevin Holland. Um, next, we'd like to invite uh, Mayor Boschkoff uh, to say a few words. And this development certainly couldn't be happening without the support of the City of Thunder Bay. And for that, we want to say miigwech and uh, Mayor Boschkoff. Thank you so much. And indeed, uh, it is a day to smile because uh, it's a day to count our blessings when people come together to do these kinds of things. I want to work first recognize Kevin, that's uh, 37 individual ministerial snares already, so he's really doing, having a great season and, uh, getting, getting ministers right. here. So, <laughs> And, uh, and uh, Minister Clark, I, I, you know, with this announcement this morning and today's I promise to stop uh, wait out, waiting outside the hallways <laughs> at conferences. To, <laughs> oh, what a coincidence! It is. So, um, well, you got to do what you got to do, right? So, um, but this is truly a meaningful day in the city, and there's times to celebrate, and today is certainly one of the one of them, particularly for what this means to the, our sense of community and a sense of bringing people together. And when you see the different organizations represented here, people who work together and pull together. So it's not just, uh, not to be bland, another housing project. Uh, this one is very significant because it addresses a gap in services. And any chance we get to start making it more, more, more easy, easier for, for people who are accessing the system to work the way, th way through it, then we are genuinely helping people, and, and making le uh, by taking away obstacles, uh, we may, their their life is already difficult. So, what we could do uh, by be providing such supportive care is to really provide a continuum of service, so that uh, they're not kind of trying to leap from a lily pad to lily pad, but they're going from step to step, and so. Uh, when when you talk about starting your life uh, already struggling, places like this will make healing and recovery that much easier and uh, increase our chances of success and bringing uh, some peace and happiness to people's lives who may not have been so blessed. So uh, I want to thank you again for uh, Minister Clark for for the 8.7 million and MPP call. Uh, Holland, who never stops working for us, and uh, we may, we may, I mean, mean it lightly sometimes. And uh, MPP Bourgeois, uh, merci bien, de salut, uh, and also the organizations, uh, organized tirelessly, continuing the, the struggles. The Métis Nation of Ontario, Ontario Native Women's uh, Association, and this trauma center with wraparound service. Uh, it's going to be something that we're going to be proud of when, when we start seeing the successes. So congratulations to everybody. This is community. Thank you. Be rich, uh, Mayor Ken. Uh, next up to say a few words is Margaret Froh, President of the Métis Nation of Ontario. Uh, MNO has been a partner of Ontario Aboriginal Housing Services for over 15 years, and we're glad to have you here today, Margaret. Be Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Margaret Frodish Nikashian. I'm president of the Métis Nation of Ontario, and uh, we are the Métis government representing rights bearing Métis citizens and communities here in Ontario. And it's uh, an honor to be here today. And I want to start by thanking Elder Jean Nauvijik for a beautiful opening prayer, for the smudge, for the song, and starting us off in a good way today. Chimigwech, uh, Elder Jean. This really is, today. today's announcement really is a significant step forward in a, a very long journey of uh, compassion, understanding, and empowerment for Métis, for First Nations, and for Inuit youth. 
and, uh, and in particular youth at risk of homelessness. Um, we are very proud to play, the Métis Nation Ontario is very proud to play a role as a partner in this project. It, it fills us with a, a profound sense of purpose and optimism as we think about, as, as others have referenced, the Elder Jean in particular, the impact that this project will have on young Indigenous people. The opportunity to work alongside dedicated community partners as we are in this project, all in the spirit of collaboration and respect, on a project that so deeply aligns with those fundamental principles of respect, of inclusiveness, and of healing is truly remarkable. So this, this Junot Avenue Indigenous Youth Transition Project is, is going to be a beacon of light to vulnerable youth who struggle with housing instability and the, the challenges, those adversities that life has, has thrown their way. Uh, it is work that uh, was embarked on several years ago and with the commitment shown today, and you can see um, all, all levels from provincial, municipal, Indigenous government, as well as um, Indigenous social service organizations today, we see that collaboration will only lead to a brighter future for young people who are so deserving of an opportunity for recovery, for healing, and for a brighter future. It's a, a project that I think is a real act of reconciliation. It's a testament to our shared dedication to righting the wrongs of history and to foster healing, not only for the young people that are gonna be seeking refuge with, within the walls that will be here at some point in the not too distant future, but also for the entire community. And I wanted to really acknowledge um, the mayor's comments there. By supporting this project, we, we collectively declare our commitment to compassion and our dedication to breaking unhealthy cycles, to dispelling stereotypes, to pushing back against the stigma that youth at risk have had unfairly endured for a very long time. Providing a safe haven where youth can access crucial services, counseling, employment training, and very importantly, their culture. We give a, a genuine opportunity to these young people that are yearning to make positive changes in their lives. Today's announcement marks a pivotal moment in our shared journey toward providing Indigenous youth, Métis youth, First Nations youth, Inuit youth, with the stability and the opportunities that they deserve. It's a, a, this project is a, a testament to the strength of our collaboration, of our shared determination to continue to maintain strong, positive relationships and to really make a lasting impact on the lives of our youth. And I, I want to acknowledge everyone that is here today, especially Elder Jean, um, the minister, Kevin and, uh, and uh, Louise as well, um, and to have our partners here, Tina Bobinski from the OHAS board and also a uh, representative from the Ontario Native Women's, Katie Bortolan, a director of housing for Thunder Bay Indigenous Friendship Center, uh, who I have not met yet, um, but I, uh, and of course the mayor. And I, I again, want to acknowledge the, all the la layers of government, provincial, municipal, Indigenous government that are working together on this project. We are not just the government, uh, Métis government in Ontario, we also provide uh, a whole range of housing and infrastructure and other services. And I wanted to acknowledge Cindy Rye and our housing and infrastructure team that are here. And of course, our leadership, uh, my colleague, Tim Sinclair, who's the regional councillor, uh, Wendy Houston, who's the president of the Thunder Bay Métis Council. And I'm really happy to have Maddie Campbell, Madison Campbell, who's the, the regional youth rep on our youth council for this regional community. So let's embrace this moment, really, as a celebration of progress, a, a commitment, an ongoing commitment to community and an affirmation of our dedication to fostering that safe space for our young people, for growing and for healing. Merci to everyone for making this happen. And I'm looking forward to the beautiful things that will come out of this investment. Merci, miigwech. And it is now my pleasure to introduce, I'm helping out Justin, Tina Bobinski, Senior Director of Community Development of the Ontario Native Women's Association. Bonjour. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tina Babinski, and as Wendy said, I'm the Senior Director of Community Development at Ontario Native Women's Association and also a very proud member of the Ontario Aboriginal Housing Services Board. Uh, today we gather to announce the inspiring and transformative initiative that holds the power to change countless lives, countless young lives. It's with great pleasure and a profound sense of responsibility that we introduce this project that strongly resonates with OHAS and our project partners 
Métis Nation of Ontario, Thunder Bay Indigenous Friendship Centre, and the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. This project, project represents what can be achieved when communities come together with a shared vision. The Thunder Bay Indigenous Youth Transitional Housing Development is a testament of the partners' collective will and determination to advocate for and respond to the urgent housing needs of our Indigenous youth experiencing or at risk of homelessness in the city of Thunder Bay. Indigenous youth are challenged by lack of safe, suitable, sustainable and supportive housing options that meet their unique needs. As a result, their lives are negatively impacted with homelessness that offers renders them vulnerable to addictions, exploitation, trauma and physical harm. This new housing development will be a place where youth can connect back to their culture for healing, strength and a renewed sense of purpose. We recognize by connecting our Indigenous youth to their roots, they can find strength and reclaim their identities, their lives, their independence, and their leadership. We envision this housing development as a stepping stone towards full tenancy and meaningful lasting change. Indigenous youth will have a safe place to live while learning the tools to they need to navigate the path towards independent living. Through comprehensive programs and guidance, they will have access to education, life skills, and, uh, and other uh, things that are important in their life, like employment and education, uh, and finding safe spaces for them to gather and, and grow. Um, as you may know, the Ontario Native Women's Association was established in 1971 to empower and support Indigenous women and their families in the province of Ontario, and is the largest and oldest Indigenous women's organization in Canada. This transitional housing development will ensure that young women Indigenous women are safe and provided protection from violence, exploitation and human trafficking. Ontario Native Women's Association, Métis Nation of Ontario and the Thunder Bay Indigenous Friendship Centre will play vital roles in providing the wraparound services that our ministers have talked about today. ONWA specifically will provide mental health and addiction services and supports including assessment, care planning, interventions and treatment. Facilitate referrals to other necessary services our youth need to build strong, healthy, uh, independent youth. Uh, we'll also offer cultural programming, traditional healing and ceremony for Indigenous youth that stay at this housing uh, program. And also access to other programs that ONWA provides, like our Nadawan housing program that supported 468 uh, young people to transition to independent living last year. I want to thank the, the Ministry of Municipal municipal affairs and housing for their support and this significant investment. We know this investment will fill a critical gap in access to safe, culturally supportive transitional housing for our Indigenous youth. Today's unveiling of the youth transitional supportive housing development is a promise to uplift Indigenous youth by connecting them with their cultural heritage and supporting them to successful independent living. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to all those who have championed this cause and whose dedication and passion have brought this pivotal moment forward. Miigwech. Miigwech for that, uh, Tina. And we'll now have uh, Katie Bordelin as the Director of Housing with the Thunder Bay Indigenous Friendship Centre. They're going to be one of the key operating partners in this development. So, Katie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good afternoon and welcome. My name is Katie Bordelin. I am the Director of Housing for the Thunder Bay Indigenous Friendship Centre. I want to start by saying how grateful we are to have Senator Grant from Métis Nation of Ontario and our Elder Jean Naogizic here with us today. Both of them have been guiding us through this project since the beginning in 2019, so thank you for all that you've done. This opportunity from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, our vision is coming to fruition. I want to acknowledge the collaboration and dedication of our partners, Métis Nation of Ontario, Ontario Aboriginal Housing, and the Ontario Native Women's Association. Unfortunately, our Executive Director of the Thunder Bay Indigenous Friendship Centre, Charlene Beglin, is not able to be here with us today. She has been instrumental in this work, and I really want to honor her tireless commitment to this project. It is due to her leadership and her time 
that we are proactively and positively responding to the housing crisis while addressing the complex challenges that urban Indigenous youth face in Thunder Bay. This project is needed and we all know it and it will only strengthen our community. It will be rooted in culture and guided by the seven grandfather teachings. The Do Not Transition Home will offer participants a welcoming place to call home while they transition from homelessness to healthy and independent living. They will be part of a community. They will be engaged in their own individualized care plans. They will have opportunities to participate in ceremony, in cultural programming, land-based activities, and life skills. They will have opportunities for continued education, for employment. They will have 24-hour support, wraparound services, and will be met with encouragement every single step of the way. This announcement is a pivotal moment for all of our partners and for the community as a whole. We will soon be providing Indigenous youth with the housing stability and the healing opportunities that they truly deserve. So thank you for all of your continued support. And again, thank you to Senator Grant and to Jean for all you've done guiding us with this project. And I'll now call Justin back up to the podium. Miigwech. Miigwech for that, Katie. Um, just before we take uh, questions from the media, just I just would like to reiterate that housing is such a proactive and preventative investment. Um, number one, it's an investment in people. And when you make the right decisions, which means investing in people, um, there are so many ancillary benefits to that. It means we have an education system that works better. It means we have a health system that works better. It means we have a community safety system that works better. And none of those things would work well without housing first. And so again, just thank you to both the province of Ontario and the city of Thunder Bay, um, all of our partners um, for making that choice um, because that's what it is. Housing is absolutely a choice. And if people are, are, are a priority, then housing will be a priority. So again, thank you to all our partners. Um, now we'll open it up to the media for any questions that you have for any of the speakers. Okay. Um, I wondered, I think this is a question for one of our local leaders. Do we know, know how many youth or young people are currently experiencing homelessness or precarious housing in Thunder? Uh, it's a really hard number to gauge. Um, the last pit count only uh, spoke with 200 homeless people in Thunder Bay. Uh, we know our shelters are filled, um, transition houses are filled, um, the amount of calls that emergency shelters are getting um, are endless. Um, we know that people are transitioning through the systems of um, emergency shelter systems repeatedly going through the cycle, so it's not a number I can pinpoint, um, just knowing that uh, it's really hard to access a lot of these. Mm -hmm. And for the youth, are they able to access the regular emergency shelters that adults access here? Uh, depend there's different age limits for some. So some shelters accept people 16 and up and some are 18 and up. Thank you. And this is a question for Minister Clark. I'm wondering, I know that this project has taken a lot of time to get to this stage, a lot of collaboration from many different partners. I'm wondering, as we're seeing the province's targets that they've set for the city of Thunder Bay, 2,200 homes by 2031, what do you think can be done to accelerate these processes so we can have more projects like this to meet those numbers? And that, that's a fantastic question. One of the things that uh, we committed to uh, last June when the government was reelected was to, to have a, a housing supply action plan every year. Um, under Premier Ford, Ford's leadership. So, so every year we would have a suite of, of consultation, of uh, regulatory changes, of legislative changes that would get shovels in the ground faster. Last week at uh, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario conference, I announced that the, the government would be moving forward with a, uh, a housing forum uh, in November where we would ask for feedback from our stakeholders and Obviously, some of the people behind me would be stakeholders we would most certainly invite uh, to participate and give us our feedback on how to do exactly what's your question. How can we help more people? How can we ensure that the processes you know, are sound, but yet don't, um, 
take too long in terms of getting shovels in the ground and moving forward. So it's a it's a it's a very important con consultation that the government uh, is moving forward, and we're going to need everyone, uh, including our um, our indigenous partners, to uh, give us feedback on on what they need and what tools they need. You know, what tools the the mayor and council need uh, to be able to meet that guidelines. You know, part of what we uh, instituted was a by name list. So we've asked every service manager to look at that. And now we need to make sure that we give those service managers like the DSAB the power uh, to get that list reduced. Right? So it's a, it's a really important all of government approach, not just within my ministry, but uh, a number of ministries that work in that continuum. Hi, it's Katie Nichols. I'm from TV Newswatch and TBT News. Um, I don't know who best to answer this, maybe Mr. Collender or Mr. Clark. In terms of the announcement of the investment today of the 8.7, how much of that is going towards the construction of the building itself versus the operational cost to continue it running once it's built? When you give me a technical question, I always like to phone a friend because it's, uh, it's yeah. their project, so I'll, uh, I'll let them talk about the capital. Sure. Thank and you very much. Collectively. Um, the uh, total total cost estimate for the development will be around $24 million. Um, the annual operating costs will be approximately $2.3 million. That annual operating uh, investment um, is coming 100% from the province of Ontario. So. Um, that's actually was one of the biggest keys to this development was so that we had the resources to ensure the 24-7 support for the youth. And again, so thank you to Minister Clark and, and MPP uh, Kevin Holland for, for that support. That's just absolutely enormous. enormous. Um, that operate, operating funding is coming from the Indigenous Supportive Housing Program, which puts the, uh, the responsibility uh, for decision making in the hands of community and um, that is driven by our local Indigenous uh, partners. Is the, and for follow-up on that, is there a risk of that funding expiring at all? Or is there a term for it? There's currently no term. He's shaking his head no. Um, as I mentioned, that, mentioned earlier, um, the, uh, the province of Ontario has recognized the good work that our community partners are doing, and they've uh, tripled the budget in urban indigenous housing in the last five years. There's much more work to be done. Uh, but I think my perception is with that level of commitment that the province is, is uh, you know, it, it is seeing the benefits of investing in urban indigenous housing. And so as long as we can, can continue to do that good work, we're hoping that we can continue to grow that relationship, not just keep it the same. Thank you. I think this is one for Justin. Um, I know operational funding for the services at this unit has been a hang up and holding back your progress with it in the past. Is is that resolved now? Is it sort of are we full steam ahead with with all of your programming? And um, I know um, some of what the Friendship Center is going to be running, or sorry, on what's going to be running has been mentioned. But if you could get into a little bit of the details, respectively, on what Friendship Center and the Métis Nation are going to be doing in terms of the programming, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Um, to your first question, uh, the funding for both the capital aspect and the operational aspect have been fully resolved. Um, the capital, uh, we mentioned in terms of the total, total, our total development cost. Um, in terms of that ongoing operational uh, funding, that's coming from the Indigenous Supportive Housing Program, which the government, which the province of Ontario um, had announced a 40% increase to that funding envelope in this past spring's budget. So that incremental investment that, that the province of Ontario has made is going directly to, to this site, uh, a portion that, uh, thereof. In terms of the, uh, in terms of the partners, um, Ontario Aboriginal Housing will be the uh, uh, developer of the, of the property and the owner. Um, the Friendship Centre will be operating, so there's sort of two, two segments, if you will, to the 58 units. Uh, 28 of the units are going to be, uh, the, those programs will be administered by the Friendship Centre here in Thunder Bay. Um, and those will be targeted to uh, youth with uh, more acute needs. And then the other 30 units will, that programming um, will be undertaken by the Métis Nation of Ontario. Uh, and Ontario Native Women's Association is also uh, helping in terms of uh, uh, post-residency 
at this site and helping people transition uh, back into community and that independent living. Thank you, Rich.